Gotcha. Right, so one great way to start um, kneeling work is to go barehanded. Okay. Right, the, uh, I, I love valley training gloves, but barehanded is the, uh, it's the best, most affordable training glove there is in the market. No doubt. Right, one of the reasons I like barehanded is because every move is intensified. Okay. Right, so if I'm a flat presenter, it's very obvious, there's no shot I can field it. Right, right. when I'm an open presenter, I'm showing the amount of surface area necessary to catch the approaching ball. Sure. Right? So we're simply going to start with we're going to start with short hops and we're just going to go to the catch. Gotcha. So I'll explain as we go. So a couple things you're going to notice. I want the swing to be as subtle as possible. Hey, you're very loose, very relaxed. Yeah. So instead of going a one uniform swing like that, yep. which a lot of guys do in their pick drills, mm -hmm. that's extreme. And why this is extreme is that I'm creating a lot of direction that way that's unnecessary. And also, the farther I take the ball away from me, the longer it's got to come back to eventually exchange it. Absolutely. So if I can go soft and subtle, I can become more repeatable and I have a better chance of capturing the ball. A couple other keys here, watch my head. I'm going to bury my chin on glove contact. Absolutely. That's going to keep me stacked. If I don't bury my chin, I have a chance to come out of posture. Right. But by burying my chin, I keep that shoulder tilt and hip hinge the same. Right, so just that simple move open. The last thing is there's no closure of the hinge. So I don't do this, mm -hmm. right? I'm not gonna allow that ball to ride up. Once I make that stop, that my palm is still open and facing the direction which the ball came. Right, so we went purely to the catch. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go to the center or the separation, right? So center and separation is something that's important to me because that establishes a consistent exchange point. And by right. establishing a consistent exchange point, that means my arm swing is going to take the same amount of time and it's going to make it easier for me to sink my feet yep. and my hands up. If I allow where I catch the ball to dictate where I exchange it, then I'm adding another variable into the equation and it's going to be hard for me to sink my feet Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Right? If I catch one off right of center, it's going to be quicker, right? And then my arm's going to be early. If I catch one far off on this side and I have to let my feet travel, then my arm's going to be late. But I'm just going straight to that center point. And when I get to center, it's thumb to thumb, right? It's thumb to thumb, right? Because it's going to create an option for me to take it out. Gotcha. So short hop to center, right? So now we're at one hop type and a second move. Now we're going to add a second hop type. He's going to start rolling the ball. Okay. On a rolling ball, go ahead, roll it. I'm not worried about shortening that hop, right? Okay. I don't need to press through it to contain it. I don't need to press through it to increase my catch rate. Right. So my thought process there is I can start to merge those two acts together. Gotcha. Now, funneling has a really bad reputation for guys who teach pressing because they think about it as letting the ball get way too deep. Absolutely. Affecting posture. But by building in this constraint, I can police that when I funnel and when I press, I still catch the ball in the same spot. That's it. Out in front of the window. That's it. Right? So if I were to freeze at a funnel, and I were to freeze at a press on a short hop, that catch point is going to be the same spot. 